Hey everyone, Alex from O'Brien here. A common question we get is about the difference between engaging and non-engaging abutments and why we would use one over the other. Almost every modern implant has an anti-rotational element built into its interface. The shape is most commonly a hex such as what you'll find on Zimmer, Nobel BioCare, and BioHorizons. Other implants have different shapes such as the Strawman Square interface and Keystone Star-shaped interface. So when we talk about engaging abutments, we're referring to those that are designed to lock into the anti-rotational shape of the interface. And non-engaging abutments have a design that does not interact with those anti-rotational features. For a single unit screw retained restoration, we need to use the engaging abutment so that the crown locks into the correct orientation. If a non-engaging abutment were to be used, the abutment would freely rotate on the implant with only the contacts of the crown providing any anti-rotation. Tying two or more implant restorations together prevents the individual abutments from freely rotating on the implant and therefore the anti-rotational features are not necessary. Because of this, non-engaging abutments are always used for splinted screw-retained restorations. In addition to the anti-rotation element not being necessary for splinted screw-retained restorations, they can also cause problems if they are used. It would be nearly impossible to get a passive fit with them, and if the implants aren't completely parallel, it may not even be possible to seat the bridge due to interferences. When we're dealing with cement retained restorations, engaging abutments are always used, regardless of whether they're singles or splinted. This is because the abutments are being placed first without the restorations. If there were no anti-rotation, you wouldn't be able to get the accurate orientation of the abutment, and the crowner bridge probably wouldn't seat correctly. When abutments are made for cement retained bridges, they're designed to be parallel with each other so that after the abutments are placed, the bridge will seat passively. It's important to note that non-engaging interfaces have traditionally only been available on UCLA castable gold abutments, which can only be used to make PFM and full cast gold restorations. Restorations such as Emacs and full zirconia require titanium bases in order to make them screw retained. This is great for single units, but the titanium bases aren't widely available in the non-engaging style. This means that for some implant systems, we aren't able to make screw retained Emacs or zirconia bridges. I hope you found this video helpful, and as always, feel free to contact us with any questions. See you next time.